Welcome to my uh, beginner's guide to petrophysics. Um, this uh, presentation is aimed at uh, non-technical people. Uh, it doesn't matter if you've never even heard of petrophysics before. Uh, anybody who's interested perhaps in trying to understand uh, w how we measure the amount of oil in our oil fields, given that they're uh, thousands of feet below the Earth's surface, how, how on earth would we go about uh, making those sorts of measurements? Um, I've, this is based on a presentation uh, that I, I made to the Aberdeen Formation Evaluation Society uh, together with a colleague of mine, Richard Fairbairn. We put on a, uh, a little seminar for, for non-technical people. Now this uh, presentation, as I say, um, is aimed at a wide range of uh, abilities and interests. Um, and since we put the original uh, seminar on, I've added a little bit of extra stuff on, on a thing called nuclear magnetic resonance. Now, don't worry about that too much. Um, if you're interested, uh, you can always watch. Otherwise, there's always the fast-forward button on this um, on this machine for you to uh, to fast-forward over if you need to. I should say that, uh, of course, throughout any of this, if you uh, do get bored then unfortunately you only have yourself to blame because access to the fast forward button is only a click away. Okay, I guess many of us could probably draw pictures like this. Any any of the disciplines we could all say that we're all at the center of everything and everybody is dependent on us and we are key players. But uh, if you humor me just a little bit, we'll stick with this analogy and we'll say that the petrophysicist is uh, working away at the rock face, sometimes quite literally, um, to try and describe the rocks and the reservoirs that uh, oil companies try and exploit and uh, find uh, oil in. So our job is to quantify the, the quality of the rock, the quality of the reservoir, and how much oil we have in place. Um, now we do this in a number of ways. Here are a set of tools that uh, we use um, to make measurements in our well bores, our oil field, oil wells. We put uh, these types of tools down the holes that we drill and we make a number of measurements. And what I'd like to do in this presentation is just briefly outline the, the principles involved in, in some of these measurements. And uh, if you're a school kid watching this and wondering why you need to know about certain things like neutrons and gamma rays and all of that, nuclear physics stuff, uh, hopefully you'll see that there's an application for it that uh, has uh, worth in the real world and helps us uh, develop our oil fields and of course ultimately uh, pay our salaries. Actually, as well as our salaries to consider, there is the cost of the logging job itself. Uh, typically when we go and log an oil well, we spend a couple of days doing so and putting these tools down the hole would typically cost anywhere from say two hundred thousand pounds to maybe even as much as two million pounds for a couple of days worth of work. Um, so it's a very expensive business and it's important that we get the best value from these tools and measurements. So what do we need to know um, in in petrophysics? Well I've sort of split things up into into four categories here. Uh, basically what a petrophysicist needs to know is uh, the type of rock in our reservoirs. You know, so what I have here is an example of, um, of say, some some magma rock, uh, some lava that's cooled down, a granite. Um, here I've got a representation of of a mud rock. Um, so this is uh, the shale or a mud that you might find on a riverbank. Here is some sandstone. Uh, so sand you might find on a beach and over here is the is a traditional shading for what's called limestone. So those are rocks deposited um, from directly from the water. They crystallize out from the water um, as carbonate crystallizes out from the sea and lay, is laid down in um, at the bottom of the sea. A good example is the chalk. The white cliffs of Dover are in fact uh, carbonate rocks. So we need to know what rock type we have in our reservoirs. Then we need to know how many holes they have in the rocks, uh, because obviously the holes are where we can store oil in. So, for example, in this first or this first example, we have um, the uh, basement rock or the magma rock, and it might have a few cracks, 
and joints in it and those holes we may be able to fill some oil up in them put some oil in there we also have uh, some holes potentially in the shales or the mud rocks now these holes are very very small and often late often they're isolated from each other they don't connect up to each other but nevertheless we may find that this rock can contain holes uh, in the sandstone here I've shown lots of little holes between the uh, between the sand grains and you can imagine when you remember on a beach you've got water inside the sand itself um, and so depending on how much how many holes we have depends on how much water or oil you could uh, your sandstone sponge if you like could hold in the carbonate rocks they're much more variable there's a whole bunch of different mechanisms for producing porosity in the rock this that porosity is what we're primarily interested in that's the the fraction of the rock that's holes if you like so here we see um, various uh, sand-like grains uh, some oolite beach, some of the beaches in the Bahamas and stuff, you might see some some little grains that are in fact made out of carbonate rather than sand. We have little shell fragments here, little old fossils that leach out and leave little vugs in the carbonate rock. And all of these holes, and sometimes they may be isolated, so not connected to anything, and sometimes there may be pathways that are leached out, um, dissolved away by meteoric water. So there's a whole range of stuff whole range of complications in uh, carbonate porosity. So the third thing we need to know of course is uh, what fluids are actually in this pore space. So we've got a porosity and we what we're interested in in, in the petrophysics side, certainly the, uh, the oil industry side, is to uh, see what fluids are contained within these holes. So here, let's go straight to the sandstone example, here I've sort of filled this rock up with uh, with some fluid and, and at the bottom here we've got water and we've got oil floating on the top. Oil is less dense than water so oil tends to float towards the top of our reservoirs and sit in the top of our sponges and similarly here in the carbonate uh, porosity system. Shall I uh, fill that up again? Because I quite like that. It's one of my favorite animations. Let's just fill it up with fluid so you can imagine the fluid sitting there in the sponge. You'll notice here that in the shale I didn't fill these holes up because it's difficult, if not impossible, to get uh, oil into these isolated pores. And in fact what we find is that shale, mud rocks, often form over the top of our reservoirs and actually hold oil in. That's what they call a trap. So that traps the oil in our reservoir structure and once the oil hits these shale layers it can go no further and stays trapped in the reservoir. The fourth element that I'm going to uh, touch on is uh, flow. Obviously uh, all this rock can contain fluid and some of it comes out uh, more easily than others. And so if we uh, I've just represented this by tipping this up and you can see how much fluid flows from the rock. And uh, this property of the rock is called permeability. Um, and in fact, so given a, a pressure differential here, that's in this case because I'm tipping it up, it's gravity. Uh, th that's the force that's driving the fluids through these uh, rocks. We've got to try and get some sort of estimate of how permeable rocks are, because that ultimately controls how much oil we can get out of our oil wells and how fast we can produce them, and hence how much money we can make from them. So in essence, that's uh, pretty much all petrophysics is about, really, those, those four elements. Uh, the rock, what type of rock it is, we need to know that. Uh, the volume, i.e. how much porosity it has, how much storage capacity it has. The fluid type within that volume, that pore space. Um, it's obviously, as oil reservoir engineers, we're interested in trying to get oil out. Uh, other engineers may want to know uh, how well their uh, aquifers are, um, how much water is uh, available to them, but for us in the oil field it's the it's the oil that pays the wages. And also uh, the flow characteristics. How good is this rock at uh, producing oil to the well bores and out at surface? So that's on a rock scale. If we uh, have a look on a, on a reservoir scale, if we take a big slab of rock now, 
Um, now this is the only equation in this pre presentation. This is the uh, the equation for how much oil it is in our oil reservoirs. So if we have a big a big tank of sand here, um, there are a number of elements in which uh, petrophysics uh, plays an important role um, in inputs into this equation. So this is stock tank oil initially in place. So the volume of oil within this reservoir is given by this equation here. That, and I'll explain some of these terms as we go. So first up is net to gross. That's the net reservoir over the uh, whole fraction. So if we put some of those mud rocks in, those shales, that will reduce the amount of storage capacity of the reservoir by some amount. So in this case, the net to gross is the is the proportion of reservoir that has sandstone in it and the uh, versus the proportion of non-reservoir shales. As I mentioned before, there's the porosity. If we take a look down here, how many holes are there in this sandstone? How much oil can it um, soak up? And the other bit of petrophysical input is the oil saturation itself. How much oil is in the pore space? So we've got, we've got some holes to put oil in. How much oil actually gets in? and uh, the GRV, the gross rock volume. Petrophysics can even have an input into that through uh, the contacts. As I mentioned to you before, oil floats on top of water here and at some point the water will rise to a certain level and so the gross rock volume of our reservoir package you know, might be defined by the amount of this rock above this oil water contact where the oil floats on top of the water so that will control this volume. So petrophysics um, is quite key to, uh, to determining overall how much oil is in our reservoirs. So what we uh, need to do as, uh, as petrophysicists is we need to drill some holes in the reservoir um, and put, uh, put some measuring devices in there that put those tools that I mentioned down through these holes and make some measurements in these rocks to determine how much oil is in place in the wellbore.